Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix and today we'll see how to use a ZOS and MVS utilities to back up your volumes. Uh, backing up is still required even in the mainframe because bad things do happen to uh, disk volumes and to and to systems so um, backing up is uh, is very very important on uh, on Z we're going to look today at ZOS as well as MVS side of things uh, so um, we will start with start with ZOS first and see how we can accomplish the same thing on ZOS uh, because most of most people nowadays run with emulated disks um, one of the best ways to backup uh, data is to back up a whole volume so this way you can restore it into any other virtual volume later you don't have to worry about if you selected all the data sets or not so dumping a volume a full volume has become very very simple and fast so let's see how to do, to do this on on um, the ZOS side of things for many years now there's been a utility or a whole system subsystem that deals with storage administration and there's a a good manual, I wouldn't say excellent, but it's a good manual out here on the IBM website. They have it updated, of course, to the latest release of ZOS, which I am running on my ZPDT system that I bought from IBM on my mainframe. But um, for all other releases, there should be a similar manual, which explains how to deal with storage on ZOS. And the central utility here is a program called ADRD SSU. Uh, here it is uh, you do everything through this through this utility and today we're going to look how to use this utility to dump a whole volume onto tape now if that tape is going to be emulated or virtual or a real tape doesn't really matter there's maybe different buttons you may have to press with your real tape such as um, the, the attention button or or any other uh, things that you have to trigger to actually write the tape but that is really on your side of things but on ZOS it's actually not that difficult at all let's see how to do it so I have here my machine and I'm gonna go look at my JCL and I have this JCL here and you see how simple it is to dump a whole volume to tape so let's look let's see what happens here um, Oops. okay so we execute one step only we give it here a region of zero megabytes but oh, you'll have to see what you need to do and then i put in here one volume out of my volumes that i have that i want to dump and then i that's my 1dd which is dasd i just gotta call it dasd like this and tape that makes it easier to read okay so we say here which volume serial we want to we want to dump onto tape or back up to tape and then we say here the tape is going to be standard label of Moshix and this is the unit where it's mounted it's almost like a standard volume these days there's always a tape around 560 580 and at this unit address and we catalog of course so now the catalog that's one thing to understand that if you if you have a tape that's being handled by zos and that data set now is going to be in the catalog even if you never mount the tape again on your system the catalog will still know the existence of this data set on that tape and that's something that's different from unix and all other systems where whatever is on the tape is on the tape and the system that is handling it doesn't know after <laughs> after the job is done that it was written on the tape because it's not part of the directory system of unix right or linux whereas on zos and mvs and all other versions of it the catalog which is the directory will hold all information of the data set for all eternity and sometimes you know you want to remove you know you want to make a tape into a scratch tape and MVS or ZOS will tell you, but there's a data set that I know is on that tape. So you need to be aware that it, once it's cataloged, it's there um, and, and for all eternity, for you know, an intents and purposes. And I've seen some shops where they had thousands and thousands of data sets that the catalog was keeping track of that were gone for a long time because the tapes were destroyed. But that doesn't mean the catalog knows that they've been destroyed. 
So be aware of that. And now every tape has a label, just like uh, volumes have a label. And so um, the catalog will keep track of that. And anytime you try to access this tape from now on, after you create this data set, the catalog will look, will tell you to go look for this volume, for the tape with this volume. All right. So then this is the, the very simple command. Uh, we move with dump from in data DD, data definition called DASD, to the output data definition called tape. We compress and we optimize. We're going to see in a while what optimize stands for. But that's all there really is to it. And so I can now, oops, I have a speller here. I'm going to write my own name. And so I can now execute this. But there's really not much to see because everything happens at the back end. Once I, I run submit here, uh, we can actually see this happening. So let's submit it. Job 1367, as you can see here. Now let's go and see what is happening bottom and so you see now the console of the system will have a, an action to the operator of the of the mainframe saying mount 560 the tape moshix to run a dump to and this data set will be created because we said that this is the volume serial and so now the uh, the operator, usually in a larger installation, it would have been the, the tape operator, is supposed to go get the tape labeled Moshix and mount it. And how you do it is different from situation to situation. If you have a if you have a, a mainframe with a real tape device, such as 3590 or 3490 or 3480, you would have to go insert and then press a button. And once you press the button, then ZOS will know that now it's basically an interrupt that it's been mounted and then we'll start to execute the job. So in my case, I have to get up and go to my machine or actually maybe I can do it from here. Let me see. Um, I think I can do it from here. No, I have to virtually go there and do it. I'll be right back. All right, so I'm back. So I went to the other room and I told my IBM ZPDT mainframe to mount that tape, which is a virtual tape, but still I have to give it a command. As you can see here, now I'm just pressing the button for the first time and it tells me that the job ended with maximum condition code zero. It took maybe two, three minutes to dump the whole volume. It's a full volume. So let's go see what happened. So this, it really doesn't tell us too much. It tells us that, um, as we just saw here, right? It says dump from DASD, input data set to output data set, compress and optimize. Um, so optimize means it, it puts, lays it out on the tape in the best possible way so that when we restore, it goes quick and also um, eliminates fragmentation. On, um, on the disk once we restore it. So it launched here and then it started, well, it took four minutes, right? Started at 3.19, it's at 3.19 in the morning when it started. I'm a little jet lagged again. And then um, it finished four minutes later. So uh, three minutes and, and 35 seconds uh, later. So it dumped the whole disk in three minutes and 35 seconds. And um, and that's how easy it is. Now I have over there in the other room. I have now a tape image, a AWS tape image, which I can now go and restore into any other volume. And so this way, I could back up all my volumes in 50, 20 minutes, and and then go and restore them somewhere else. I can also restore this way in IPLable volume, but I do have to write the IPL track. Uh, at the very beginning of the volume with the ICK DSF that I've showed in many other videos. So um, this way you can restore all the data, but to make the volume IPLable, you still have to write the IPL record or track on the on the uh, DASTI device. And but of course, um, as you know, MVS is also able to IPL from tape. Uh, nobody forbids you. You could even 
I think IPL from uh, punch cards. Um, you could have any device that can input you could IPL from. But uh, so this is how easy it is. I don't think that there's much more to show other than and then restore is basically the opposite. That's very, very simple. Um, so now let's see how we're going to do it on MVS. So oh, that is ZOS. OK. Oh, here it is. So let's make this a little bit bigger. And now we're looking, we're connected to the Moshix mainframe channel, uh, Moshix mainframe in the cloud. And I have here a little job. And somebody went and wrote an ADRD SSU equivalent for MVS because that didn't exist in MVS days. And that that's Gerhard Postpischel. I hope I'm saying his name right. But he wrote this DSS dump utility. It's, a, it's very, very similar and to some extent compatible with ADRD SSU. And so that's what we do here. We select what we want to back up, let's say the MVS residential the residence uh, unit or volume and then where we're going to dump it see the commands are very similar the only thing is here INDD name and outdd name very otherwise very similar and just specify it where you want to do it I could run this now and it would dump to a um, to a virtual tape on the Moshix mainframe in the cloud there's no point to do that uh, but it would run very similar and restore is also very similar so you can see here, that's one way to dump. You can also dump to disk. You don't have to dump to tape, right? If you want to create, a, 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 let's say, an image of a 3350 and store it on a, on a 3380, that would ob obviously work because the 3380 has more capacity and the same from 3380 to 3390. You would just have a very big data set on that device, but absolutely doable. Uh, the the utilities DSS dump and ADRD SSU are not really that discerning about where you dump from and what you dump to, as long as it can access those devices and there's of course enough space on those devices to write to. Uh, so this is how you do it with uh, with uh, how you do backups. We could do a restore, but it's almost boring because it would be just swapping one for the other. <laughs> That's really all there is to it. And so I'm not going to run now this um, this dump uh, job on the Moshix mainframe because it means I have to log in there to the console and initialize and tell it to uh, to initialize the tape. Um, so that it's just boring stuff. Um, I don't think people are interested in seeing that. But that's uh, that's really there's really all. All, the, the, all there is to it. I don't know what we have here. So that's it. Um, if you have any questions about using ADRD, SSU, or DSS dump on MBS, please uh, let me know by posting comments below this video. If you have any other comments about backing up, or, how, or maybe if you want to tell us how you back up your MBS, that of course uh, is also interesting to everybody. I know that a lot of people just back up the whole directory. You're saying, well, it's only 200, 250 megabytes of stuff for MBS, so I can just create a copy of it and that's my backup. Yes, that works, but um, that's not really how you would do it on a real mainframe. And it, you can't easily do that, let's say with ZOS 2.3 on my IBM's ZPDT mainframe, the ZOS 2.3 image, the ADCD image that I bought, is about 300 gigabytes. So yeah, you create, you can create a copy of the whole image every time you want to make a backup, but then you're backing up 300 gigabytes uh, every time. And if you want to have, the, if you want to keep versions over time, you're going to have, need some real big disks very soon. Uh, somebody said, a senator said during World War II here in the U.S. is that. When people were asking allocations of billions of dollars for the expenditure during the war, he said a billion here, a billion there, real soon you're talking real money. And the same thing. So you want to back up a whole ZOS image at 300 gigabytes each image, you will real soon <laughs> need a lot of disk space. And so maybe dumping just the data that you need to dump, like the user data, the PARM libs maybe, only backing up those makes a lot more sense 
and and then you only need to have one backup of ZOS and then restore the data that you need to restore. So that would be, and that's the way, by the way, uh, how I back up the ZBDT mainframe. Um, I'll show maybe, I'll maybe make a video about my mainframe. I have two ZOS images running, one for, which is production for the European Mainframe Academy, and then one for myself and select other people who are doing some work on ZOS 2.3 and I only back up the user data, I don't back up the whole systems and that's what I told the users. So uh, let me know how you back up your systems, how you, how you back up your mainframes or your Unix machines. It's always interesting to know how people get creative in backups as long as it works and if you haven't subscribed to the Moshix mainframe channel yet then I would urge you to do so now. Thank you for watching and goodbye.